house. There was like an ambulance outside and um, kids were running everywhere. And what was happening that day was that um, there was an ambulance or some medical team that were looking to draw blood. Uh, and it seems so unreal, but they wanted to just get blood. I don't even know for what specific reason, but kids started running everywhere. And I felt like so lost and I was so confused by everything that was happening. Then all of a sudden, this lady came towards me, like from nowhere, it seemed like in my imagination. And she held my hand, which was very real, and said to me, you know, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. And, you know, walk with me, your dad will be there, he'll be waiting for you. So in my mind, I was thinking, I've never seen this lady before. And then she's telling me that my dad will be there. How does she know this? And a few minutes walk, there he was standing there and then she disappeared. So this lady in the midst of chaos came to like my rescue and I was at peace again. And then through like my life encounters, I've had other people who've come in my life, such as teachers who saw something in me and they encouraged me to be something that I could be which I didn't even recognize within myself. And I also um, paid attention to it sometimes when I actually wasn't even thinking about it. Then getting later, like into like my adulthood, there were also like friendships that I had. Some were healthy relationships, some were testy <laughs> relationships in that um, it got me thinking about who I was as a person um, and at times I was labeled um, a quiet individual. But then my quietness became something which was quite a tool for me in that I became very articulate in my writing. But through friendships, through relationships, we can also acquire a label which is not ours. You know, so people may come into our lives and label us, but it may not be like the authentic us. You know, and it may not connect with us, but by being surrounded by other people, we can just acquire it and it becomes us. So for a while, I acquired that label and I didn't actually, you know, think too much about it because I just thought I'm going through like a transition period. The people who know me will really understand me. Okay, so in relationships, um, I met some lovely people and I, they came at a time when I actually needed them. You know, so people come into our lives when we have like a specific need, you know, so whether we're happy or whether we're like sad, people will be in tune with that. So as I grew older, I became much more aware of where I was in terms of like my, my well-being, you know, so um, I don't know if you can relate to this, but it's when we are in a place where we're not fully happy. At times, we may attract people who are actually not intended to be on in our life. You know, so what can happen as a result is that we become dependent on other people. You know, we become dependent, but dependent like for the wrong reasons. You know, so at times it may be that we may assume that people will rescue us, you know, but that's not the case. They're just tapping into something, the vulnerability. You know, so what I've learned like over the years, and I'll just acknowledge Anna, thank you for joining me. What I've learned through the years is to be in tune with the people that come into my life and also to assess, you know, the purpose, including like the judgments, you know, and the reasons why I'm being involved in those relationships and also recognizing that I have a choice in whichever relationship I actually gravitate towards. Because sometimes it can happen that um, we gravitate towards relationships, whether it be friendship or actually like a romantic relationships, but not actually realizing the reason why we, we are gravitating towards that individual. And then we start to think, oh, this person is this way or that person is that way and they're toxic and they're this, but actually, at times, actually, it's not even that. That person came because we had that specific need at that time. So I'm going to read what Anna is saying. So you understand exactly what I'm describing. 
Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we may have like a specific need at that time, as Anna is just highlighting, is that when we are vulnerable, and I can give experiences like in my life, we have gone through um, loss. And um, I, at that time, like was single. So I had just gone through like a tremendous loss. And that was like a loss like of my dad. And I knew what position I was in. I knew I was like very vulnerable. But I still thought, you know what, I'll just, you know, go out and I also like meet other people. And I met somebody who I thought I could develop like a friendship with. But in, ten, in terms of developing that relationship, I became dependent on that person. But that wasn't me. That wasn't me as an individual. And I could see it because my character was not to, not to say I don't like depending on anybody, but I was very vulnerable. So knowing that and being in tune with it, because what happens is that the more vulnerable you are, the likelihood is that you're going to be hurt. So it's not that individual that's causing that hurt, but it's you walking into that situation. So being attuned to what is happening internally is so, so important. You know, and sometimes we may think, oh, we need this specific individual to be in our lives because they're showing love to us or because they're fulfilling a need that we may need. But what I've learned is that at times it is okay to actually go through a period where you actually surround yourself by individuals who will not need anything specifically from you, but who will be there to support you. You know, who will be there to guide you like no matter what situation is, um, is going on. And um, what happens during that time is that you will start to realize who is, who is going to be there for you. You know, so for instance, when you, um, when you face challenging situations, you will see the people who turn up for you. Yeah, so the people who show up, like in terms of your hardships, those are the people who are likely meant to be in your life. You know, so sometimes you may go through challenges and think, oh my goodness, that individual was not in my life. But look at it this way. That person served their purpose. They were in your life for a reason. They did what they needed to do. They might have communicated in a way that you may not have liked, but they have served their purpose. Now, the people who are meant to be in your lives are there. You know, so I hope this is making sense. You know, and in any relationship, you have a choice. So, for instance, if you're in a relationship which you feel is draining, you know, and it's intoxicating, think about what value is that relationship adding to you? You know, how is that person getting you closer to your reason and your purpose in life? How are they contributing to making you a better person in life? You know, are they helping in any way? And also when you're surrounded by other um, friendships or relationships, when people are saying negative things about you, when you try and articulate who you are as an individual and what you're trying to achieve and all they do is say like negative things, think about the reasons why those individuals are turning up in your life and why you're letting them affect you. You know, so some of it, not even some of it, all of it is internal. So people affect us according to how we're feeling internally within ourselves. When we discover our reason why and our purpose why, we, we remain grounded and the right people start to show up in our lives. Yeah, so I hope this is like making any sense. And if you've had any relationships where you've experienced that, oh, what did this person turn up all of a sudden and I'm going through this experience, do write it down. I'm forever curious. <laughs> do write it down because they've, they've, they have been so many people I was even thinking today that I don't have any regrets in terms of like the relationships I've had, whether it be boyfriends, girlfriends, as in friendships. But some of the people I've had to actually say, okay, we were possibly childhood friends and then we've gone through so they 
we go through transition to the point that we don't need to hang on to certain relationships because we, over time, develop and become, you know, um, different individuals. So some friendships I've had to let go. Some friendships where I've thought, oh, they were my best friend for life, I've had to let go because we reached a point where it, the, the relationship was not mutual. Then I've had boyfriends and one particular boyfriend I was thinking about today where I thought, oh, finally, I can like articulate who I am as a person. But that person challenged me in a way which I didn't expect um, in how they were in terms of like their character, which didn't agree with me and who I was as a person. So when they when they were acting in that way, it was almost like it was draining. It was draining me. Then I started to reassess thinking, okay, yes, they, there is a love factor there, but how is this person actually helping me? You know, how are they mutually um, caring about like my feelings and why are they showing up? So when I looked deeper, is that this person showed up at a time when I needed somebody, you know, but I needed somebody, it wasn't for the right reasons. It was a journey that I needed to heal myself from first in order to meet the right person. So that person was actually reflecting the anger, <laughs> ironically, the anger that was going on within me, my own self tom um, turmoil. Okay, so that person was bouncing off like my energy, but only that when I was looking at them, I was thinking, oh, who is this person? You know, and um, I wasn't looking within myself. So when I came to re the realization, I knew that there were certain specific things in my uh, past that I actually hadn't come to terms with, that I hadn't actually cleansed my soul. And I thought I was doing that, but I was